Nation of Intent, welcome to day 44. And yesterday I talked about protein powders, vegan versus beef versus whey. And we went through some of the ingredients. We went through the different protein densities. The whey isolate was the most protein dense. That is for 30 grams, we're getting 26 grams of protein. For 30 grams of the beef, we're getting 24 grams of protein. And for 30 grams of the vegan protein, we're getting uh, 20 grams. So we can see that we get a little bit less protein per serving uh, as we go from whey to beef to vegan. We also talked about the ingredients. All three of these products by ATP Lab, by the way, they've got great ingredients. Um, but generally speaking, I like to go with less ingredients in terms of uh, everything that's added in the protein uh, other than the proteins themselves put in the product because obviously the proteins that are put in the products, that's what we want. The reason why I don't like the other things in there is because generally, not always, these are additives that can uh, not necessarily be too healthy for you. Actually, ATP Labs does very well with their, with their products, all three. But also these extra additives take away from the protein density, right? So when we start adding in more things that aren't protein, then uh, we are just watering down the protein, so to speak. So when we look at the plant-based protein, what are the ingredients for ATP Labs? And as I mentioned to you yesterday, I don't have the, the bottle in front of me. I'm looking off my computer here. Um, so I guess it's gonna make a difference. We have organic plant protein complex. This just means a blend essentially. We have organic pea protein, organic rice protein, organic pumpkin protein, organic sunflower protein, and organic coconut protein. And why the blends, I'm not sure, but it might be just to get a better amino acid profile. It might be for, di for digestion, it might be both those things. It might even just be the flavoring as well. I'm not sure. I'd really have to talk to Dr. Dwayne Jackson and ask him why. Organic cocoa, organic flavors, xanthane gum. We went through this yesterday. This is just simply a fiber. Organic stevia, a sweetener, organic monk fruit, another, another sweetener, natural flavor, and, and, and an enzyme blend. Amylases, proteases, lipases, cellulases etc. There's, there's a, there's a list of, there's quite a list here. So, and those are just enzymes. We, th these are just enzymes that basically help to digest the protein. And this is a big issue with vegan protein powders is their, their digestibility. Um, not, not just their digestibility, although this goes hand in hand with what I'm about to say, but the bioavailability, how much of it do we just pass through? So the only downfall with vegetables in general, a lot of it in terms of, uh, excuse me, a lot of the nutrients in them, they're just really hard to get. They're just not as bioavailable as, you know, the vitamins and the minerals that we get in, in animal-based products. Those are much more bioavailable than the nutrients that we get in uh, fruits and vegetables, generally speaking. Now, this protein though, I will, I'm gonna tell you something about this vegan protein, even though it isn't as protein dense, even, even though it isn't as protein dense, it some of the essential amino acids are actually higher, are actually higher than the essential amino acids found in the beef protein. No, that's the way, in the beef, in the beef protein, which is surprising to me, uh, just simply because Animal-based proteins are higher in essential amino acids. So maybe they've added some in here. I'm not sure how that's happened, but it's something just very interesting to know. By the way, the amount of essential amino acids in the vegan protein powder versus the beef protein powder is very, very negligible. When, when I say that the, the vegan has more, it's like almost, it's, it's almost exactly on par. But if, if you wanna know which one actually does, actually the vegan does, it's kind of interesting. But, if you can have the whey, go for the whey. It's way higher in essential amino acids. Let me just give you an example here. And let's go to the branch chain amino acids. 
um, we'll, we'll look at something like leucine. Uh, so in leucine, we have roughly uh, almost three grams versus leucine in this product for the same serving size, we have 1600 milligrams. Okay, so we got about half the amount of leucine. Uh, we look at something like isoleucine, another branch chain amino acids. I say branch chain amino acids, these are, these are essential amino acids that we tend to oxidize when we're exercising, especially exercising very hard. Uh, in the vegan, we've got about 900 milligrams, just under 900 milligrams. And in the, in, in the way here, we've got about 1.6, 1.7 grams, almost double. When we look at the valine, another branch chain amino acid, the third branch chain amino acid, uh, the valine in the vegan is uh, 950 milligrams. And in this one here, we've got about 1.3 grams. So again, uh, another decent amount, plus all the other essential amino acids are higher in the whey, which is really no surprise Whey is very high in essential amino acids, especially branch chains. This is the one I'd recommend if you can have it. We, we definitely want to pay attention to those essential amino acids. I am very, very impressed with the vegan blend put out by ATP Labs. So if you're looking for a good, a good vegan protein powder, I, I highly suggest you try this one. I haven't tried the flavoring. I don't know what it tastes like. It, it, it's a good sign to me that it's not just pea protein because pea's got this really strong flavor. I tend to think that's definitely one of the reasons why they did the blend. Like they did the rice, the pumpkin, the, the sunflower, the coconut, all these different protein extracts from there. And I'm sure they have other reasons as well. In terms of the, the enzymes that have been added to the vegan protein powder, don't worry about that. You can, you can, in fact, a lot of people that have digestive issues will take uh, plant-based enzymes. These are all plant-based enzymes, by the way. So just uh, keep that in mind. This will only help with your, with your digestion. Okay, let's get to the message of the day. On this day 44, sometimes you just have to get going to get going. You just got to get going to get going. What do I mean by that is sometimes you just have to, sometimes doing something will actually get you motivated. I know we always think as motivation as getting us to doing something, but sometimes, I mean, I can speak for myself on this. I don't want to do something or I don't feel like doing something or I keep putting it off. But then once I start doing it, it's almost like it's just, okay, now I, I kind of, I kind of get motivated, especially if I see results almost uh, instantly. And this can be something like as simple as, you know, daily stretching or whatever, just for mobility and, and, and a better range of motion. But the, but my point is here is that sometimes it's like, rather than thinking about it so much, just go and do it. And the act of doing it will sometimes set that habit and that habit might come in or that, that habit that you set might come faster than what you might, uh, excuse me, what you may expect. So sometimes you just like, okay, just do it, just get going in it and you'll see it's just not so bad. So sometimes you just gotta get going to get things going. Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for the love of God, give some gratitude. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.